Hi there. Today's topic is on multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a progressive immune-related demyelination disease of the CNS, causing disruption in the transmission of nerve impulses, depending on the nerves affected. The etiology is unknown, but is considered autoimmune. Risk factors include smoking, lack of vitamin D exposure, exposure to Epstein-Barr virus, the female gender, age between 25 and 35 years, and the white, white race are more susceptible. Diagnosis is based on presenting symptoms, CT scan, which shows increased white matter density, and MRI, which shows presence of plaques, and CSF analysis. Clinical manifestations vary and have different patterns depending on the location of the lesions or the plaques. Frequently, the disease is relapsing and remitting, has exacerbations and recurrences of symptoms. This picture shows the process of demyelination. A and B are normal nerve cells with the axon and the myelin sheet present. Pictures are uh, the figure C and D shows slow disintegration of the myelin sheet resulting in a disruption in the axon function. The areas most affected are the optic nerves, chiasm and tracts, the cerebrum, brainstem and cerebellum and the spinal cord. Degeneration of the axons results in permanent and irreversible damage. The types and courses of multiple sclerosis. The first is relapsing remitting or RRMS and this is characterized by clearly acute attacks with full recovery or with sequelae and residual deficit upon recovery. Periods between disease relapses are characterized by lack of disease progression. Primary progressive MS. This is characterized by disease showing progression of disability from the onset without plateaus and temporary minor improvements. Secondary progressive MS begins with an initial RR course followed by progression of variable rate, which may also include occasional relapses and minor remissions. Progressive relapsing MS shows progression from onset but with clear acute relapses with or without recovery. There's no cure or, and there's no cure, but um, there are disease modifying therapies that are often used, which includes interferon, IV methylprednisolone or steroids, and IV immunoglobulins or IVIG. Symptom management of muscle spasms, fatigue, ataxia, bowel and bladder control, is often necessary. Clinical manifestations. The signs and symptoms of multiple sclerosis are varied and multiple, reflecting the location of the lesion or the plaque or combination of lesions. First, visual disturbances or blindness. This may include blind spots, nystagmus, scotomas or white spots in the visual field, diplopia, blur and blurred vision. There can be sudden progressive weakness of one or more limbs. Muscle spasticity is seen in 90% of the cases. Tremors, gait instability, difficulty in coordination, loss of balance and ataxia may be seen. Unusual fatigue, weakness and clumsiness is also noted. Fatigue affects most people with multiple sclerosis and is most often the most disabling symptom. Heat, depression, anemia, deconditioning, and medications contribute to the fatigue. Swallowing and speech difficulty may be seen. Abnormal reflexes, meaning absent or exaggerated reflexes, is also common. Dysfunction of bowel and bladder, which includes retention, incontinence, urinary frequency or urgency, if UTI develops, and sexual dysfunction. Pain, numbness, paresthesia, and possible decreased perception 
to temperature, touch, and pain is noted. Loss of proprio proprioception is also seen. Proprioception is um, losing the balance when you try to walk with your eyes closed. Altered emotional state includes depression, apathy, irritability, or even euphoria. Cognitive and psychosocial changes and dementia may be seen in some patients. So the diagnosis for the care of patients with multiple sclerosis include impaired physical mobility, risk for injury, impaired bowel and bladder function, impaired verbal communication, disturbed thought processes, ineffective coping, impaired home maintenance, and potential sexual dysfunction. The major goals, therefore, would be promotion of physical mobility, avoidance of injury, achievement of bowel and bladder incontinence, promotion of speech and swallowing mechanisms, improvement in cognitive function, development of coping strengths, improved home maintenance, and adaptation to sexual function. Management of patients with multiple sclerosis. The overall goal of care is to maintain as much independent function as possible, orient the client to environment, and teach strategies to maximize the vision. Allow hospital clients, hospitalized clients, to keep their own routine. Help clients recognize choices in care and set priorities on a day-to-day -day basis whenever possible to maintain a sense of control and independence. Institute safety measures because of decreased sensation or spasticity, which can increase the risk for falls. Encourage self-care and include rest periods and energy conservation measures to prevent fatigue. With exercise programs, encourage clients to work up to the point just short of fatigue. Very strenuous exercises are not advisable. Relaxation and coordination exercises promote muscle efficiency. Walking improves gait. Teach client that for muscle spasticity, stretch, hold, relax exercises are helpful, as are riding a stationary bicycle and swimming. Consider the fall precautions while doing so. Assist client with ADLs on an as-needed basis. Provide adaptive utensils or other assistive devices as needed. Initially, work with the client on avoiding schedule. Teach client that as incontinence worsens, uh, females may need to learn clean self-catheterization. It's referred to as clean self-catheterization because um, while at home, they can reuse the catheter by disinfecting the cath catheter appropriately with soap and water and drying it. The male, males may need a condom catheter. Maintain fluid intake of at least 2,000 ml per day, high fiber foods, and a bowel regimen for constipation problems to promote bowel and bladder function and prevent impaction and or urinary tract infection. Communicate with client about issues of concern, such as coping skills, sexuality, and changing body image or others as identified by the patient. Avoid sources of infection. Illness can act as a stressor and trigger an exacerbation as well as fatigue and rapid changes in temperature. Medication therapy includes immunosuppressants, antivirals, corticosteroids, antibiotics for UTI, interferon, which is usually taken once a month, anticholinergics, antispasmodics as needed, IVIG or IV immunoglobulins, Stereotherapy and chemotherapeutic drugs are administered in acute exacerbations to shorten the length of attacks. Coordinate and refer as needed to healthcare services, which may include social services, speech therapy, physical therapy, counseling services, home care services, and the local MS Society for or Multiple Sclerosis Society for emotional support and direct services. Develop a plan for communication 
individualized to patient needs. Memory aids structured environment and daily routines to enhance cognitive function will also be helpful. Impaired swallowing increases the patient's risk of aspiration. Carefully assess swallowing and gag reflex and take measures to prevent aspiration. Tuck the tucking the chin while swallowing will prevent aspiration um, and choking while eating. Reinforce and encourage swallowing instructions. Sit at 90 degree angle or on a chair. Again, tuck the chin while swallowing. Strategies to reduce risk of aspiration have a suction apparatus available, confirming correct consistency of food and liquid consistency. Monitor for signs and symptoms of complications, including respiratory failure, autonomic dysfunction, DVT, pulmonary embolism, and urinary retention. Maintenance of temperate environment. Air conditioning is, um, is encouraged to avoid excessive heat and avoidance of exposure to extreme cold. Of course, wherever it's possible. Client education includes medications, symptoms, bladder training, intermittent self-catheterization, sexual functioning, avoiding complications and possible triggers, which includes fatigue, temperature extremes, and illness, illnesses.